Event delegation is a pattern that is based upon the concept of event bubbling. In my previous video, I explained what event bubbling is and I mentioned that it's a concept where an element receives an event and that event propagates to the element parent and its ancestors. It goes upward in the dom tree until it gets to the root element. This is the foundation that makes event delegation possible. Event delegation is an event handling pattern where you handle events at a higher level in the dom tree instead of the actual level where the event was received. In this video, I'll be using examples to simplify how event delegation works in JavaScript. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I simplify the web. If you'd love to see videos where I simplify topics around web technologies, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, frameworks like React, and all of that, then please hit the subscribe button. Before I explain what event delegation is, let me briefly show you a good example to show you how event propagation works. We have this HTML here. This is the code for it. So we have this div. This div is a parent of this span, and this span is a parent of this button here and then we have this style where we give the body a background color of pink div background color of green span background color of blue as you can see here this is the button the blue is the span the green is the div now because of event bubbling when this button receives an event this event would be propagated to the span and to the div and to the body up until the html which is the root element so here i have this javascript where i get the button element and i get the div element using query selector and i add an event listener to the button and add an event listener to the div and on this button it's a click event where i log button click to the console and for the div also is a click event where i log div click to the console now if i come here and i click on the button watch what happens i click on the button and in the console we have button clicked and div clicked so what this means is that this event listener for the button here is triggered because the button receives a click event and the div also has a click event and that's because the click event propagated from the button to the div so how how does event delegation work with event delegation instead of handling the click event on the button since we know that the event is going to propagate to the div we can handle that on the div instead which is a higher element in the DOM tree basically here it's the buttons grandparents or you can say ancestor so the idea of event delegation is that you delegate the handling of an event to a different element in this case the div which is a parent element instead of the actual element which in this case is the button that received the event. So let's say I want to handle the click event that occurred on this button in this div. How do I go about it? Well, I already know that the div is going to receive that event. So I have the event here. Then I'm going to also get the event argument that will be passed to this callback function. And I can clear this here. On this event argument, I can get the elements that actually received the event on the target property. So on this target property, if I click on the button, this is going to return button. I can quickly test that. So you see, so I'm going to say console.log target. If I come here and I refresh, if I click on click me, you can see we have this button here. But remember that the handling is on this div here. So now I have this target and then I can say if the target dot tag name, which is a property on the element that returns the tag name in uppercase. So if I can say if the target dot tag name is button, then here I can say console.log button clicked. So if I come back here and I refresh, if I click on the div, you see nothing happens. If I click on the span, you can see nothing happens. But if I click on this button, you see we have button clicked, but this is handled on the div. I'm just going to clear everything here and just say console log something was clicked. If I go back here and I refresh and I click the button, you can see we don't have an event listener on the button, neither do we have an event listener on the span, but we have the event listener on the div, which is the green block, and then we have something was clicked. So what we have done here is that we have delegated this click event to the div, even though the button was what actually received the event. So this is a very simple example of event delegation. But why would you want to handle an event on the div instead of handling it directly? directly on the button. Well, it's important to understand the benefits of event delegation. Event delegation is a useful pattern that allows you to write cleaner code and create lesser event listeners for similar logic. What do I mean by this? Let's say here we have this div and this div has three buttons. Here is the result. Now let's say we want to perform a logic where if you click on button one, you have in the console button one. If you click on button two, you have the text button two. And if you click on button three, you have the text button three. In our 
our JavaScript, if we want to implement this, we may do it like this. So first, we're going to get the elements from the DOM. I'm going to use query selector all, which gets all the elements that matches a CSS class selector. And for this selector, I'm going to use button tag name. Then I can now say buttons dot for each. And for each button, I can come down here and I can say button dot add event listener. And then here I can say click. And then here I get the event object. And then I'm going to console log event dot target dot inner text. If I come here and I refresh, when you click on button one, you see we have button one here. When you click on button two, you have button two here. When you click on button three, you see you have button three here. So we have the logic that we want. But what do you notice here? We have ended up creating three event listeners for these three buttons that were queried from the DOM. Instead of having so many event listeners, since we know here in the HTML that whatever event this button receives, it's going to propagate it to the top. Whatever this one receives is also going to propagate it. Whatever this one receives is also going to propagate it. Then we can use a common parent or common ancestor that these three buttons share to handle that event. In this case, this is the common parent that they have, which is this div. So I can use this div. I can delegate the handling of the click events on these buttons to this div. How do I do that? So I can come here. I'm going to comment all of this. And then I can say constant div is equals to documents dot query selector div then here i can say div dot add event listener i'm creating only one event listener which is a click then i get the event object and then i come here so how do i know what element actually received the event i can get that on the target property of the event so event dot target if the target dot tag name property is equals to button then i know it's a button that was clicked and not something else then i can now console dot log target dot inner text we created a click event listener on the div we are handling a click event on the div we get the target which is the element that actually received the event before it propagated to the div here we check if that element is a button using the tag name property then we console log the inner text of that button if i come here now and i refresh remember the div is the green block if i click on this div block you can see nothing is logged here so even if the div actually receives a click event nothing is logged that's because we created a condition here to check that what receives the event is button. In this case, what receives the event is div. But now watch when I click button one. See, we have button one logged here because we know that button one is what actually received the event before it propagated to the div. If I click on button two, same thing. If I click on button three, same thing. So what do you notice here? We have created just one event listener on a common parent that these three buttons share, which is this div. And then I'm handling whatever click events these buttons receive only on this div. This is why event delegation can be beneficial. It could improve the performance of your applications because now you have just one event listener instead of three like we had the first time. Another thing also is that if we come here and let's say we add another button and this is button four. If we're using our previous solution, now we will be having four event listeners. But since this last button is also having this common parent, then we don't even have to make any changes to this code. If I come back here and I refresh, click on button one, you have button one, click on button two, click on button three, click on button four. Event delegation has made it possible for us to handle that event on just one element. And like I mentioned earlier, this is possible because of event propagation. And that is it about event delegation. There are other advanced scenarios where event delegation can actually be more effective. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe, and also turn on notifications for more concepts I'll be simplifying in JavaScript.